Equal distribution of energy among degrees of freedom, equipartition theorem. In the video on the relationship between pressure and temperature in the context of the kinetic theory of gases, the following formula for calculating the pressure for ideal gases was derived. In this equation, N denotes the number of molecules in a considered gas volume V, for example, the volume of a gas cylinder. Ekinex refers to the mean kinetic energy of the molecules. With this kinetic energy, the molecules eventually collide with a boundary surface and thereby exert the pressure P. This pressure can then be experienced as a force acting on the piston. The kinetic energy given in the formula refers only to that velocity component with which the molecules actually collide with the boundary surface. According to the arrangement of the piston and the choice of the coordinate system, the mean kinetic energy therefore refers only to the velocity component in the x direction. Velocity components in the y or z direction, which are directed parallel to the piston surface, do not lead to an impulse on the piston during the collision and are therefore not relevant for the pressure on the piston. Thus, the pressure given in the shown formula refers only to that pressure which is measured in the x direction. However, for the other spatial directions, a pressure can be defined quite analogously, which is linked to the kinetic energies along the respective directions. However, practice shows that the pressure in gases is always equally distributed in all spatial directions, even if only the velocity component of the molecules is changed in the x direction. To show this, the cylinder sealed with a piston can be equipped with three pressure gauges. These are mounted at right angles to each other, so that the pressure exerted by the gas in the various spatial directions can be measured separately. In fact, you will find that the pressure for all three directions is identical. Now the gas in the cylinder is compressed by pushing the piston into the cylinder. The moving piston then hits the oncoming molecules in the gas with a certain force. On a microscopic level, this process is similar to hitting an oncoming ball with a racket. The moving piston thus increases the speed of the molecules in the negative x direction. This also increases the mean kinetic energy that is related to the x direction. Consequently, the compression should only increase the pressure in the x direction and the pressures in the y and z direction should remain unaffected. However, this is not observed in practice. Experience shows that the pressure will increase equally in all spatial directions. According to the given equations, the kinetic energy for all three spatial directions must have increased equally. Obviously, the energy supplied during compression must have been distributed equally among all three spatial directions. This phenomenon of equal distribution of energy is also called equipartition theorem. So note. The equipartition theorem states that the kinetic energy of the molecules in a gas is equally distributed over all three spatial directions and thus the pressure in all spatial directions is identical. The equipartition theorem is a consequence of the random statistical motion of the molecules. These chaotic movements of the particles leads to continuous collisions in which the molecules subsequently move in different directions. In this way, the originally ordered motions quickly become disordered with no direction being preferred and thus an equal distribution of speed and energy taking place. The equipartition theorem is not limited to translational motion but applies to all forms of energy at the atomic level, such as rotation and oscillation. In the following we will go into this in more detail. In the video on the relationship between pressure and temperature it was shown that the mean kinetic energy of a molecule is related to the thermodynamic temperature by the given equation, where Kb denotes the so-called Boltzmann constant. The kinetic energy e kin is therby no longer limited to one direction but to be understood as the total kinetic energy of a molecule. The total energy contained in an ideal gas in the form of motion, generally also referred to as internal energy U, is thus obtained by multiplying the mean kinetic energy of a single molecule by the total number of molecules N contained in the gas. We will discuss this equation in more detail in the following. First, however, it should be noted that the three spatial directions in which the molecules of an ideal gas can move ultimately represent the possibilities that the gas has to store energy. A molecule can, so to speak, store its energy in the motion in x direction as well as in the motion in y or z direction. These possibilities to store energy are also called degrees of freedom. So note. In thermodynamics, degrees of freedom are the number of possibilities to store energy at the atomic level.
A molecule of an ideal gas thus has a total of three degrees of freedom, that is, for each spatial direction one possibility to store energy in the form of a translational motion. For each spatial direction or each degree of freedom f an energy of one half kbt is assigned for a molecule. The entire gas thus has an internal energy per degree of freedom of one half nkbt. These formulas multiplied by the total available degrees of freedom then result in the respective total energy. While monatomic gases only have three degrees of freedom in the form of the three spatial directions for translational motion, linear molecules, such as diatomic molecules, can also have rotational motion. In this case, there are theoretically three further possibilities for storing energy. These include rotation around the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Theoretically, in this case, a total of six degrees of freedom result. Three of translation and three of rotation. One will also notice an equal distribution among these possibilities to store energy, regardless of whether it is a translational or rotational motion. Imagine that the linear molecules in a gas are initially only given a translational motion in one direction, but then sooner or later the molecules will begin to rotate due to the collisions between the molecules. Due to the random motion, the originally purely translational kinetic energy will gradually be converted into rotational energy and distributed equally among all degrees of freedom. For example, the translational kinetic energy in the x-direction will then be the same as the rotational energy around the y-axis. We can thus extend the equipartition theorem to arbitrary degrees of freedom. The equipartition theorem states that the total energy is distributed equally among each degree of freedom. Note that the temperature is determined only by the translational kinetic energy of the molecules, regardless of whether the molecules rotate or not. Thus, at a given temperature, the same amount of energy will always be attributed to the translational motion, which is determined by the shown equation. According to the equipartition theorem, however, the same amount of energy must then also be present in the form as rotational energy, as long as the molecules can rotate. Therefore, for each degree of freedom of a rotational motion, the same formula applies as for the translational motion. This therefore also applies to the calculation of the internal energy. A diatomic gas with a total of 6 degrees of freedom thus contains twice the internal energy at the same temperature and the same number of molecules compared to a monatomic gas with only 3 degrees of freedom. Note that for quantum mechanical reasons, not all theoretically possible degrees of freedom can actually be used for storing energy. For example, with molecular hydrogen H2, a very high energy is required for the hydrogen molecule to rotate around the molecular axis. At moderate temperatures, the energy present in the gas is usually not sufficient to cause the molecule to rotate around this axis. The use of this rotational energy is therefore only theoretical. This is then also referred to as a so-called frozen degree of freedom, since this is only actually present at high thermal energies or high temperatures. The hydrogen molecule, like many other diatomic molecules, thus has effectively only 5 degrees of freedom. Note that in many cases, the atoms are assumed to be mass points, including the individual atoms of linear molecules. In this case then no energy can be stored in the rotation around the molecular axis anyway, because effectively no mass is in rotation. In this model, such a diatomic molecule has only two degrees of freedom for rotation. That is why in most cases one speaks of only two degrees of freedom for rotation and not of three. The consideration as mass points makes also sense, because otherwise one would have had to take rotational energies into account even for monatomic gases, since spherical atoms can also rotate and thus store energy. Moreover, practice shows that in most cases only two degrees of freedom are effectively present for the rotational motion of diatomic molecules anyway. In the case of diatomic molecules, it must be noted that there are generally also binding energies between the atoms, which act similarly to an elastic spring. Due to these elastic bonding forces, the molecule can also oscillate along the molecular axis. One might think that this is only one degree of freedom. In fact, however, oscillations contain both potential energies and kinetic energies. Therefore, there are always two degrees of freedom for possible types of vibration. In contrast to the actually existing degrees of freedom of vibration, a possibility of how a molecule can oscillate is also called a mode of vibration. Each mode of vibration therefore always contains two degrees of freedom.
Triatomic linear molecules, for example, can oscillate in four different ways and thus show four modes of vibration. This results in a total of eight degrees of freedom. One vibrational mode results, for example, from the symmetrical stretching of the two outer atoms along the molecular axis around the centrally located atom. As another possibility, the molecule can also perform an asymmetric stretching motion by all three atoms vibrating along the molecular axis. The third and fourth vibrational mode result from a so-called bending mode which is also referred to as scissoring. A distinction is made in which plane, vertical or horizontal, the vibrational bending motion takes place. For triatomic nonlinear molecules, there are generally three modes of vibration. At the one hand, again there is a symmetrical stretching of the outer atoms along their molecular axis. At the other hand, again exists an asymmetrical stretching, where atoms vibrate phase shifted. The third mode of vibration is again a bending mode, where the outer atoms vibrate in a kind of scissoring motion within the molecular plane, which means that the bond angle oscillates around a resting position. To determine the position of an atom within a molecule, one needs three coordinates. 1x, 1y, and 1z coordinate. A molecule with n atoms thus needs three times n coordinates in total, by which it is then unmistakably defined at a certain point in time. This number of parameters corresponds to the total number of possibilities the molecule has to move, to rotate, and to vibrate. These total possibilities can be divided between the translational degrees of freedom, the rotational degrees of freedom and the modes of vibration. If the number of degrees of freedom of translation and the number of degrees of freedom of rotation are known, then the number of modes of vibration can be determined with the shown formula. It must be noted that for the internal energy the actually existing degrees of freedom are relevant, since in these energy can be stored, that is per degree of freedom 1 half times n times kb times t. For the total degrees of freedom, therefore the number of modes of vibration must be counted twice, since a mode of vibration contains both potential and kinetic energy. If one divides the degrees of freedom between the translational motion, the rotational motion and the vibrational motion, then the given equation applies to the total number of degrees of freedom relevant for the internal energy. If the previously derived relationship is used at this point, then the energetic degrees of freedom can also be determined by the number of atoms of a molecule. The table shows the number of degrees of freedom for monatomic, diatomic and triatomic molecules. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.